We will read from Vilapa Kosumanjali, verse 67. O Kanjana Akshi, girl with the eyes as restless as wagtail birds. When will I feel a great festival of joy in my heart? When I see you being fondled by the queen of Raja, Yashoda, who embraces you, kisses your head, and lovingly stares at you as if you are her newly married daughter-in-law. <clears throat> One more time. <clears throat> o Kan Kanjanakshi, girl with eyes as restless as wagtail birds. When? Will I feel a great festival of joy in my heart when I see you being fondled by the queen of Raja who embraces you, kisses your head and lovingly stares at you as if you are her newly married daughter-in-law? Here is addressing Radhika like girl with the eyes very restless and comparing her eyes with wagtail birds. <clears throat> Some special birds, which is very complicated in Croatian language to find translation, but these birds are very restless. They are never peaceful. They are always turning all around. And in that way, Tulasi is comparing Radhika's size with this kind of birds. And as we know, in Vilapa Kusumanjari, there is many names of Radhika, which explains her emotional feelings like a restlessness. And Tulasi is addressing Radhika like Ayatakshi, Chandravalakshi, Indivarakshi, Taralakshi, and so on and so on. And here is Kanjana Akshi. So all this restlessness, which is present in Radhika's heart, can be seen in her eyes. But different feelings and different reasons of restlessness. And just exactly knowing the heart of Radhika, intense feelings, Tulasi addressing her. And in that way, she's remembering her about specific Lila. where Radhika's eyes were specifically restless. We translate and we say this is very restless eyes. But we should follow acharyas who are opening this kind of restlessness which is coming from Radhika's heart. 
and which are very connected with specific levels. And here in this word, verse, it's very clearly explained that Lila is going on in Nandishwar, where Radhika and Madhya Yashoda are together. So this is two kinds of bhava which are very prominent in Nandishwar. Embodiment of motherly love, Vatsalya, Ras, in the form of Yashoda, and the embodiment of Madhurya, Rasa, in the mood of Parakyaba, and Radhika is embodiment of that. These two embodiments, these two persons, are now close each to to each other. And in these words, Tulasi, like a manjari who is witnessing, who is observing this exchange of love, is giving us, sadakas, opportunity to enter through our ears, to enter with our consciousness deeply in this room, dining room, in Andishwar, with Yashoda is fondling, so tenderly fondling Radhika like her own mother. But what's happening? Radhika's eyes are very restless. Usually, when someone fondles fondle you, the eyes are not so restless. It's very peaceful, very satisfied. But Radhika's eyes are very restless. And of course, the special meaning behind of this is present. And devotees who are practicing bhajan, who are very carefully listen to the words of Acharyas, can receive some picture in, in the screen of their hearts and minds and understand why in this specific situation Radhika's eyes are very restless. Then Yashoda is fondling her. So like our Gurudev is saying, it is a good subject for meditation. Gurudev, you want to add something to say on these words? Listen, please. Oh, okay. okay. So I just gave some short introduction on these words because through the words of Raghunath, we can enter in Lila. But also we need the help of those who are perfectly following Radhika's maidservants and who have already attained perfection. And we are very fortunate that we can listen from our beloved Guru there and also Anantadas Babaji, who is writing the commentary on these words just like uh, Tattva Darshin, someone who is seeing, who is feeling this transcendental world and transcendental pastimes. So I will continue to read the commentary of Anantadas Babaji. Shri 
Shri Raghunatha submits to Swamini's lotus feet. How severely his heart suffers for want of her. His desire to see her is also just for her pleasure, only to serve her, not for his own happiness. I will read again these two sentences. Shiragunata submits to Swamini's lotus feet how severely his heart suffers for want of her. His desire to see her is also just for her pleasure. Only to serve her, not for his own happiness. So it's very clear from these first sentences when Raghunath is suffering to see, to serve, to attain lotus feet of Radhika and her direct darshan, he is suffering. His heart suffers so much. But reason why he is praying with such a burning desire is not for his own pleasure. Please, Radhe, I want you. Please, Radhika. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your ankle bells. I want to see you. I want to touch you. I want to smell you. Yes, I want that. But not like an ordinary sadaka who is asking and praying this for himself. So this is crucial point to understand what is a really pure Manjari Bhav. Pure Kevala Bhakti. He is suffering because he cannot serve Radhika. And he is eagerly praying because he knows, like Baba is saying, that she wants her. So we should be careful with our prayers and to check our prayers are there our prayers are for ourselves for our liberation for our benefit or we should learn slowly learn how really to pray How really to pray for the satisfaction of our beloved Swami. Because this is real Vandana. Otherwise, if we are just praying for ourselves, this is religious prayer. Please fulfill my desires. But, Raghunath is teaching us here that we should pray not from this body, but from our real identity, spiritual identity, Swarup. This is the prayer which Raghunath is offering to Radhika. He is never outside of his Swarup. Even in his external consciousness, he is conscious about his Swarup. And he is 
offering the prayers from Swarup <laughs> and begging Radhika, please allow me to be with you so that I can serve you because you want me. And if we know, when Gurudev gave us Sudikshas, he gave last mantra, which is direction, how to chant this diksha, mantras, Navadvip and Vrindavan diksha, for those devotees who have received diksha. And it said, this last words, last mantra, said, you rather engage me in this most confidential and secret japa. Yesterday, on Croatian Zoom Sangha, we were talking about this. You engage me. By your kripa, by your mercy, I receive through your maidservant, my beloved Guru Manjari, I receive these diksha mantras through which you are engaging me in most confidential and most secret japa. So I'm begging you, the next part is, Second part, I'm begging you, I'm praying to you, please give me a mercy that I uh, can attain my Swarup city. If you don't give me mercy through my Guru Manjari, I cannot attain it. There is no way how I can earn it. There is no way how I can attain. I completely depend on your mercy that you give me this special Kripa. This is a special Kripa. It's not ordinary Kripa. It's special Kripa that I can attain my Majjhari Swarup. And then third part is, when I attain by your Kripa, this Varup Siddhi, perfection, please be so kind and allow me to always be with you. Something like this. Because when I'm with you, in my spiritual identity, this is the only way how I can be with you. I can be engaged in this most confidential and secret japa. So through this mantra, last part of the mantra, conclusion of all mantra, everything is present in this words. If we are reading, if we are meditating on each meaning of this word, this is direction, this is the goal, and this is the way how we can attain that goal. If we know what is the goal. But the goal is not for my bodily benefiction. First point, primary point is, like Baba is saying, his desire to see Radhika is also just for her pleasure. Only to serve her, not for his own happiness.
This is the pure devotional service in the mood of Manjaribha. And for that, we need the Kripa. Pure Kripa. So, Gurudev, you want to help your foolish disciple. For Jayanandaji, please help your brother. Jayananda Maharaj, yes. He's oh. loved. I love that. You're an. Please, I'm very Maharaj. <laughs> Maybe later on, let me talk. Now, now I wish to hear more. Okay, I, I, I will not embarrass anyone, but please, whenever you feel. So, I will continue then. There is no deceitfulness in a pure, loving heart. And this love is most pure in Vraja. Yeah. There is no deceitfulness in a pure, loving heart. And this love is most pure in Vraja. When the Sadaka follows in the footsteps of Krishna's devotees in Vraja, the rays of the moon of Raga Bhakti will be reflected in his crystal clear heart. Then love will be free from deceit. So here is one more confirmation that we need Kripa from someone who already is free from deceitfulness not like me, who am full of deceitfulness, who is, whose heart is beating just for Radhika's pleasure. And only from his heart this reflection of his pure love <laughs> can be infused in my heart. And this infusion of pure love will actually enlighten my heart. When we say, please enlighten my heart, what does it mean? Please infuse me with pure love, because only pure love can really enlighten the heart with pure light. And automatic result is deceitfulness, different kinds of deceitfulness, gross and subtle will vanish from the heart. Infuse my heart with pure love, enlighten it, and then Raga Bhakti will be reflected on my heart. To Gorang Sandaraji, can I a little bit add? So this, we may have a question. What is deceitfulness? So material speaking, we may say many crooked mind, many material desire, lava puja pratista. That's also true. But here, another deceitfulness, spiritual 
deceitfulness. This is I feel. This is I should have <coughs> Like awe and reverence. So here mentioned, Mother Yashoda loves Radhika just like own her daughter. It's nothing. Actually, we may say <coughs> no Aishwarya Baba is maybe maybe not correct. Aishwarya Baba is there, but too much Madura, too much Raga. Covering this Aishwarya Baba. Sometimes we may say we have some kind of peanuts or maybe cashew nuts co coating by chocolate. So <laughs> then very sweet and uh, covering this like a peanuts flavor and cashew nuts. So later on maybe uh, Andas Baba explain. So this in, in Buraja, so pure, because nobody in Buraja, nobody seen Krishna as Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, <laughs> we are, we are, when we are approaching Nare Maharaj, we are shocked. Why? Because forget Krishna as Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> they are true. Because if we, if we have feeling Krishna is Supreme Lord, then we cannot enter Braja Baba. Yesterday, Guru Dev mentioned one story, one, I think, son in law, Ramai Taku, asking Janaba Ma, Ma, I wish to hear what is Babo Urasarasa. And then Jana Batakurani was explained to us, explained to a son in law. This is the purest of love only we could find in Buraja. And also <laughs> Dashi of Lada. So this Goranga Sundra Ji explained no selfishness. So sometimes we may not understand. I may not understand because full of desire. But the manjari is so pure because no selfish desire, only desire for radika. Even sometimes Radhika testing Manjari. Very famous verse. You know, I'm pleased with you. I can offer friendship, friendship. I can put your position like Radhika. Would you like to take it? Then Manjari said, no, 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 I, I, Pay obeisance to, I respect to your friendship. But for me, for me, I want to remain your dasi. I have no other desire. So Brajabashi is, is center is Krishna. And they have no selfish desire and pure love, pure raga. Especially Manjari is this pure, purest Baba because only, only Radhika, through Radhika, she can taste Krishna's all attributes. Nothing, nothing to, no desire for Manjari. So this we could we could understand, we can learn by the mercy of Lashka Vaishnava, like Anandas Bhavaj Maharaj, like our 
guru de guru manja rade rade just i want to say this Adirate. Thank you very much, Maharaj. So I will continue in your mood. Outside of Raja, all forms of love of God are more or less mixed with feelings of awe and reverence. Even in the appendix of Raja Lila, Navadvip Lila. I will read it again. Outside of Raja, all forms of love of God are more or less mixed with feelings of awe and reverence. Even in the appendix of Raja Lila. Now do play. So, before we continue, Baba is giving examples what's going on in Avadvip, in Avadvip Goral. Maybe we can explain these differences between Raj Lila and especially Navadvip Lila. And Gurudev is very often is saying actually that if he's just stay on the level of Navadvip Lila, we will be always absorbed only on Vaidhi Bhakti. But if we understand deep connection between Navadvip and Vrindava, then we can progress to Vraja, eternal Vraja pastimes, Vraja Lila. Understand the pastimes of Yugalaki Shore deeply. And then again, we can understand Navadvip Liva. Gora Lila, even more deeper and deeper and deeper. In one sense, there is no difference between Navadvip and Vrindala on the one level, transcendental level. Ultimately, during one past time, Radhika personally create Navadvip. It's very nice Lila, but she created the Navadvip. And she said to her lover, everyone who is worshipping you and me here in this place of nine Islands will surely attain us. This is the benediction of Shimatera So this Nava Dvipa, Dvipa means um, islands, and Nava is the number nine. This explaining the nine folding process of bhakti, shravanam, kirtanam, smaranam, vandanam, dasyan, sakyam, atman, archanam, da atmani vedana, finally. So, but without understanding what is the goal of these ninefold processes, ultimate goal, devotee can miss the point. But if he really practice honestly, sincerely, with full, simple heart, 
Not complicated heart, not full of knowledge and philosophy, simple heart. He will immediately understand what is the goal. And where Navadviplila is bringing him? Directly to Vraj. And one special beneficial I heard, actually I read a long time ago from Bhaktivinoda Stakur's one of the book, that one special benef benefit from the Navadvip is that Navadvip doesn't take offenses. Because the Navadvip is the place of Goranga, cool, merciful, kind, personality who appear in Navadvip. And what is the this if we understand that Goranga is a Gorangi, then we understand how Radhika is merciful. And this Navadvip I'm talking it because there is few or many devotees who are not maybe so much close and they don't understand when we talk about Navadi, what is going on. But actually it's like a preparation school. For most of us, not everyone, but for most of us. And I understand that Baba is saying that because of that, still in Navadvip is very this mood of awe and reverence, Vaidhi, Dharma, and awe and reverence is so much present. But he is making a difference and saying that in Vraja, a Zix exists only pure love from pure hearts, without any whiff of awe and reverence. So this now we place, and also in the beginning stage of spiritual mm -hmm. life, when devotee is starting. It's like a preparation school, which can bring us to the next level. And in all different places, like Vaikuntha, up to Dvaraka, it's always some mixture, like Janandaji said, some mixture of Aishwarya, awe and reverence, and of course some prema, some level of prema. But in Raja, there is no such kind of things. Gurudev, do you want to tell us something about this? <laughs> Waiting a long time for this. Ah. Uh. So Baba is giving now example. I try to explain why Navadvip and Vrindavan is little different. And Baba is saying, outside of Raja, all forms of love of God are more or less mixed with feelings of awe and reverence. Even, even Navadvip Lila, which is appendix of Raja Lila. So he's given an example. Ramananda Roy was, for instance, Vishaka Saki. In Vraja. 
So he should have had pure, fraternal love for Sriman Mahaprabhu. He should. But when he met the Lord on the bank of God Godavari River, and their mutual love arose, Ramananda Roy could not take the Lord to his own home. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 843 is explained. He is explaining his own through his own words why he couldn't do that. Just to invite the Mahaprabhu in his own home. The Vedic Brahmanas invited instead of that the Lord and Raya respectfully told him. Where are you, Lord Narayan himself? And where I am, a royal servant and lowly Shudra. Where are you, Lord Narayan himself? And where am I? royal servant of lowly Shudra. You didn't fear the Vedic injunctions by touching me. Although the Vedas forb forbid you to touch me. Both in form and nature, you show all the symptoms of God. In form and nature, you show all the symptoms of God. Such transcendental attributes are not possible in a mere living entity. So from these words, honest words, or from another row, we can feel that on his sadaka wish, he was perceiving still in Navadvip. It's a pastime, but okay. He perceiving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu like a Lord, like a God. And because of that, because of this vision and consciousness, he couldn't embrace him. He couldn't even call him in his house. Because his Shudra and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a Lord. So Brahmanas did that job to invite him on the lunch. At their pure homes with the pure food and pure consciousness, Dharmic consciousness. So this is appropriate according to Vedas. But this is also discovering Ramananda Roy's fear, Ramananda Roy's mood of awe and reverence. And it clearly shows that this is the obstacle of pure devotion service. So this is the mood in Navadvip. Very nice friendship is present there between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with all associates, but still there is some awe and reverence. In, very, in some cases, they rejected this awe and reverence in the Shiva's Thakur house, but now this is not the point. And Baba is continuing. But Krishna's friends in Raja, 
eat his food and climb on his shoulder. Therefore, there is no other place but Raja which is free from any whiff of awe and reverence. Without allegiance to the people of Raja, there will inevitably come some Aishwarya Gya. Feeling of lordliness about Krishna. Raja Loka Anusarat, without following Raja Vasis, it's not possible to get in that mood, spontaneous mood. And devotees who wants to attain Srimadhyay Radhika and her lover is taking the shelter of Srimadhyay Radharani by following her most intimate, confidential kinkaris. Like Rupa Manjari, Lavanga Manjari, Tulsi Manjari, and so on, so on, to all chain of persons who are situated in that pure existence of Manjari Bhav, up to the, our Guru Manjari. <coughs> ah, sorry. So this following, the mood of Rajavasi is the only key how person can enter in Raja. And it must be clear. There is no other way. Even Lakshmi, she couldn't enter in Raja because she didn't want to follow these villagers. She is Lakshmi. She doesn't want to follow the feelings, even the dress of Rajavasis, villagers. And she started to do different austerities, but it didn't work. And Rajavasi, still today, are laughing, actually. She is still doing austerities. <laughs> she is very determined with her decision to do austerities. But there is no place. Sorry, we are villagers. Foolish, simple, loving sweet villagers. But for me, when I read this, it's very important that without allegiance to the people of Raja, it will be unavoidable to come in some kind of Aishwarya again. So, so much stress, so much point out is to receive the feelings by following exactly the footsteps in the rhythm of their hearts. Rupa, Ragunata, Pade, Hoibe, Atuki. Then Yuga Lapiriti can come. Because this is most confidential and most secret japa. Sri Krishna is the Supreme Personality of a Godhead, the complete non-dual truth. And Sri Radha is the Supreme Goddess, Swayam Bhagavati, or the complete 
Mahabha. Someone is approaching Radhika like Swayam Bhagavati still. Because this is the habit. Long, long time I was practicing Krishna, Supreme Personality of Godhead Consciousness. So I am Bhagavan Consciousness. And now I heard that there is no way other than only through his love I can approach him. So I heard for Radharani, this nice, sweet, beautiful lady or girl. But in the same time, I heard that there is no difference between them. She is Swayam Bhagavati. But somehow, I forget. I'm not attentive that she is embodiment of Mahabha. And when we are approaching to Radhika, with the prayers, please give me this, give me that. We are approaching again to Swayam Bhagavati. But to approach Mahabhava is completely another kind of consciousness, another angle of approach. I'm praying, I'm crying. Yes, you are missing me very much. But because I am aware that is for your happiness. This is for your pleasure. And this is Babu Lhasa Rati, which Guru Dev explains so many times. For your happiness, I want to be with you. And Baba Fani, in some funny way, he's saying, when he was explaining position of Krishna like Supreme Personality of Godhead and Radhika as Swayam Bhagavati, he said, this is Tattva side. Yes, this is true. But what we know is the Rasa side. He is Sri Radha's Prana Bandhu. And because she, he is Radhika's Prana Bandhu, I also want to serve her, him. So this Prana Bandhu words, those who know Gurudev especially, and I don't know who is there, Jainandaji also. Bandhu means friend. For Krishna, I say laukika bandhu, worldly friend. But we can see here that Radhika's best friend is the friend who is her heart, her life heirs, Rana. So this is Rasa side that she wants always to fulfill his desires. And this is the reason why he is in her heart all the time. There is one more example Baba is mentioning here about this different mood of Navadip Lila and Vraj Lila. First he mentioned the Ramananda Roy relationship with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and now he is mentioning Rupa Goswami's relationship. And he is talking or writing. Anyway, he is talking. 
Shri Rupa Goswami humbly stayed in Haridas Thakur's cottage at Puri. Afraid to approach Mahaprabhu directly. But in Vraja, as Rupa Manjari, he prays. O Empress of Vrindavan, O Shiradike, please make Kashiripu Krishna pitifully pray to me for your audience. So in his Sadaka wish, Rupa Goswami is still showing his awe and reverence to Mahaprabhu. But in his Swarup, he's making jokes and asking Radhika, please make arrangement that your lover pitifully pray to me <laughs> for your audience. The sweet mood towards Krishna, totally free from all, is nowhere else to be found but in the shelter of Sri Radha's lotus feet. Srila Rupa Goswami shows that even in Vraja, there is more awe and reverence felt by Chandravali than by Sri Radhik. This is interesting. And now Ujwala Nilamani is giving example and saying, Chandravali takes her left arm from Krishna's shoulder while they are dancing in the Rasa festival and embraces him with her right arm instead. Carefully and crookedly, she moves both her feet, being afraid that she will hit Krishna's feet while they dance together. Seeing this, all other young girls are laughing. So it's very clearly explained this different mood even in Raja between two lovers most prominent lovers in Raja, between Radhika and her opposite, opposition, Chandravali. Please, can someone explain this? Gurudev is in deep meditation, Jananda, please, why it's going on like this? Why Chandravali takes left arm from Krishna and putting her right arm on his shoulder? And she's always worried not to step on her feet, his feet. And looking this scene, young girls are laughing and laughing, and laughing. How freely and sweetly our Swamini dances.
how freely and independently she lifts her feet upon Moha's chest. Shirupa says, I am a maidservant of death rod. That's why Mohan is simply wandering behind me. I am proud to be the maidservant of that Radha, who puts her lotus feet on the chest of Mohan. And the reddish leg from her foot soles are just imprint on her breasts. His breast, pardon. Excuse me. Death Radha. This, this word Death Radha has such a sound vibration which can penetrate in our hearts and completely give us how Raghunath or Tulsi is seeing his own beloved Swamini and her lover. Death Radha. Isn't it Janandaji? Yes. So specific. Wow. So Radhika's nature is is Bamya. Chandra Bari's nature is kind of Dakshina. So Radhika's Radhika's too much love. And Radhika could say anything to Mohan. And Radhika could step on Mohan's feet or even Mohan's chest. And uh, Manjari is watching Radhika's feeling and, uh, and behavior. Especially, Manjari likes to see Radhika's super superiority. Because in this Manjari Baba, we love Radhika more than Mohan. And uh, Manjari want to see always Radhika's victory. Radhika's superiority. So, therefore, Radhika's name is Jaya Shuri. Always <laughs> victorious. That Radhika we want to see. We want to taste. This is only Buraja we could see. No other place. Because Buraja know all and reverence and too much Raga, too much Mahababa, too much Madanakya Mahababa. Radhika become crazy because of love. So this is, uh, uh, Goranga Sundaraji explained very nicely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now Baba is giving third example between devotees, Goranga's devotees, associates, close associates, and him. How awe and reverence can be present, manifested in their relationship. Please listen. In Kashi, Benares, Sriman Mahaprabhu and Sanatana Goswami embraced each other to the astonishment of Chandrasekhar. Sri Goranga had just returned from Vrindavan and was in the ecstasy of Virahini Radha. 
Radhika full of separation. And Sri Sanatana Goswami was absorbed in his Siddha Swarup of Labhangamajari. Both were absorbed in their previous moods of Krishna's Raj Lila. But as soon as they returned to external consciousness, the mood of awe and reverence returned. And Sanatana said, Oh my Lord, don't touch me. And the Lord Guranga said to him, I am touching you to purify myself. On the strength of your devotion, you can purify the whole universe. Can I make a little comment? Yes. So, so, Goranga Mahaprabhu <coughs> is externally Brahmin. He was born Brahman family. Sanatana Goswami also born in aristocratic, aristocratic Brahmin family. But he was unfortunately become servant of a Muslim uh, countries, Nabam Sensha. So therefore, uh, Sanatana Goswami is felt I am very foreign because of bad association. But Mahaprabhu's vision is very much amazing. Mahaprabhu always sees Swarupa Besh because he's saying, I'm touching you to purify myself. On the strength of your devotion, you can purify the whole universe. Another sentence I think he said, if I, I think Sanatana Goswami is so much for say, wood, so much boil there, so much bad smell is coming. At that time, even that situation, Mahaprabhu embraced Sanatana. Sanatana tried to escape, escape from Mahaprabhu. But Mahaprabhu said, if I don't touch you because of external condition, that Krishna, Krishna, I forgot that he said exactly. Krishna like, Krishna doesn't like, Krishna maybe punish me. So Mahaprabhu always seeing good quality of devotees. And Mahaprabhu always seeing Swarupa Besh. This dear sadhu is always taking good quality of devotees. Even Krishna, even Krishna is taking mood of Putana. Putana try to kill him, kill Krishna. Putana want to kill Krishna. But as motherly love externally, Putana put his breast on the like a nipple, he, she, she put on the, some kind of poison. And uh, Putana was thinking, let Krishna die to, to, what is it, sucking my breast. But Krishna was taking his bad mood, but he accept his Putana's good intention, not uh, external good intention. So like a sadhu is like this, Gurudev also, Gurudev always want to see good quality of devotees. 
even though we may, we may so much bad qualities, but the good day, in good day's vision, he catch little bit good quality, and then he glorified. Mahaprabhu's vision also like this. Mahaprabhu always taking, uh, seeing his good quality, devotee's good quality, and also Swarupa Besh. This is in this condition, I, I am feeling like this. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, this is so beautiful. The service of Sri Radha is Sriman Mahaprabhu's gift and was taught by himself and by the Acharyas who surrendered to his lotus feet. When once Siddha Swarup awakens, feelings of separation from Sri Radha will become very strong. I want to see you today, at this moment. I won't waste any more time. I am alone without any company. With whom else but you should I stay? That is the mood of someone who was touched by Sri Radharani's mood. I will read it, read it again. Please, allow me. When once Siddha Swarup awakens, feelings of separation from Shirada will become very strong. The more Siddha Swarup is awakening in the heart of devotee, naturally, he will feel more separation from Srimati Radhika. Different devotees on different levels have experience about their Swarup and according to them, they feel separation. More or less. And when this separation becomes so strong, devotee is thinking, I want to see you today at this moment. This prayer, this cry, is not from bodily consciousness of life. I came in Vrindavan and I have to see and I want to see you today, immediately at this moment. I came in Radha Kunda, and I just want to see in this moment your loving pastimes. Because if we coming back on the beginning of the commentary, we will say why devotee is crying out of separation for Radhika's own happiness. I want to see you now for your happiness. At this moment, for your happiness. Then we can see how the prayer becomes different. Different mood of prayer, same sentences, same words, but what is intention behind? For my benefit, or to attain Swarup Siddhi, engage in this most confidential, most secret se service, and to be always like you, be behind you like your shadow. 
and shadow of the shadow of your shadow. I want to see you in that mood today. Because next sentence, which devotee is thinking Baba is writing, is so clearly explaining. When someone has this kind of pure desire, pure love, he is automatically saying, I won't waste any more time. If I say, and usually I'm doing this, or rather I want to see you, I want to touch you, I want to meditate on you, but at the same time, I want to waste my time on another things. It means that my desire that I want to see you now, although sounds very bold, actually, is not a proper prayer. But if I feel I don't want to waste my time anymore, I am alone without any company. With whom else but you should I stay? This is Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Najiva Mitvaya Then we can recognize that. Heart of devotee is burning from bona fide loving separation. And Baba is saying that's the mood of someone who was touched by Radharani's mood. Radha Kripa Kataksha. Mahaprabhu weeps. Yugaitam nimeshena chakshusha pravrishaitam shunya itam jagat sarvam govinda virahename. Because of my agitation, the day will not pass. Second appears to be like an age to me. And my eyes are like monsoon clouds that shower tears. Out of separation from Govinda, the three worlds seem to be empty. I am burning in a slow fire and my life will not leave me. I'm burning in a slow fire. Sri Das Goswami is in that state, Baba is saying. I feel so much pain in my heart. And please stop my misery. Show yourself to me today. How deeply he is absorbed in his Saida Swarup. Now he is not Raguna. Now he is Tulsi Manjari and the falls on the bank of Sri Radha Kunda, anxiously lamenting. O oh, beautiful lake, how many pastimes isn't my Ishwari playing on your banks with her most dearly beloved Priya Tama? How dear you are to Radha Mohan. I don't want anything else. Please show me Ishwari's lot of sweet just once. And 
and Baba is continuing his commentary. Some of this loving separation for Swamini will also awaken in the heart of the aspirant who follows in the footsteps of such an Acharya as Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Conditioned soul cannot have this kind of feelings. Conditioned soul is not able for such kind of festival of qualities, festival of pure feelings. And his only way is to follow the feelings of our Rasika Acharyas, who are already Radha Dasis. Because when we are reading and listening their words, we are coming in the touch with Mahabharata. There is no difference between Mahabharata and the words of Acharyas. And we know, we heard so many times that whatever touches, whatever comes in the contact with Mahabharata becomes Mahabharata. So our Acharyas are always with, in touch, in contact with Radharani, embodiment of Mahabhava. They are Mahabhava, and automatically whatever they say, whatever they sing, is the sound, vibration of Mahabhava. And somehow, by Goranga's mercy, unlimited, causeless, completely causeless mercy, now we Sadakas, have opportunity to come in the touch, in the contact, and be touched with this chantamani of Mahabha through our ears. When we are listening these words of Raghunath or Baba and other pure Rasik devotees, actually we are coming in the contact with this chintamani. Mahabhav. And this is great beneficial benefit for we I cannot understand. My mind is like a frog, so limited. But somehow we receive that gift. And somehow, only way how we can keep it, this gift, is to open our heart. Because this gift will make our heart, like Chintamani, pure, crystal, pure heart. Should we stop? It's not necessary to finish all the commentary. If someone wants to add, share something more. Very beautiful. Like a constant shamaring from nectar of Swamini, like Mahababa. So, especially recommended to hearing from Rashka Vaishnavas, like Goranga, Goranga Sundar. Because hearing, hearing means we can, we forget this mind process and come into the heart and then purifying and also start, we start same feeling like Raghunath Das Goswami's. 
And this feeling slowly, slowly by the mercy of this Baba, Mahababa, our Swarupa also awakening. And then we could feel more and more by the mercy of our Guru Manjari and Ragnata Das Goswami. Actually, Tulasi Manjari. So this is a process of hearing this, especially Baba's words is like a, what do you say, golden words. And uh, it penetrates our heart and wash away our contamination. This is I'm feeling. Also Guru Dev's words penetrate our heart. So therefore this constant everyday hearing, like we are taking shower every day to keep our body clean. So similarly, so we want to take this hearing process. So thank you very much. Radhe Radhe Maharaj, thank you very much. Thank you for your blessings and mercy. Thank you for your mercy. I cannot give blessings and mercy to superior. It's no, not, I'm not, I'm it's not, not possible, possible, you know. You are, you are more superior. <laughs> oh, no, never. I'm sorry. <laughs> Radhe Radhe Gurudev. It was so nice to be in your association. Yes. Okay, Radhe Radhe devotees, thank you very much. I'm sorry for anything that was wrong. Please take the good, leave the bad. That's nice. That is sweet. Mm -hmm. Many things I realized. Wow. Mm -hmm. First time.